We could learn new information this week about Donald Trump's attempts to subvert the 2020 presidential election results. Five members of the Oath Keepers, including the group's leader, Stuart Rhodes, are facing charges of seditious conspiracy. Their trial will get underway tomorrow with jury selection and opening statements that could begin as early as Thursday. The Washington Post notes prosecutors plan to call as many as 40 witnesses over a projected five-week span. They'll draw from 800 statements by those charged and also summarize tens of thousands of messages, video footage, and phone calls leading up the to the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Despite nearly 900 arrests and hundreds of convictions relating to the Capitol assault, Rhodes and his four co-defendants are the first to stand trial on seditious conspiracy. It marks the biggest test yet in the Justice Department's efforts to hold rioters accountable. We'll be following that. A former advisor to the January 6th committee is releasing a book built as a behind-the-scenes look at the committee's work. Denver Riggleman, a re former Republican congressman, is set to publish his book on Tuesday against the wishes of the committee, which has tried to keep its sources and methods under wraps. The announcement came ahead of the appearance that he had on 60 Minutes, where Riggleman also claimed the committee is aware of a call that was placed from the White House to a rioter on the Capitol grounds on January 6th. It's not clear who placed the call or whether they were in a position of authority. Do you get a real aha moment when you see that the White House switchboard had connected to a rioter's phone while it's happening? That's a big, pretty big aha moment. You get an aha. Wait a minute. Someone in the White House was calling one of the rioters while the riot was going on? On January 6th, absolutely. And you know who both ends of that call? I only know one end of that call. I don't know the White House end, which I believe is more important. Yesterday on Meet the Press, January 6th committee member Jamie Raskin confirmed that call. This apparently says a call came from inside the White House. I mean, how hard have you guys tried to track down who that person was? Do you have an idea of who it was? Um, I, you know, I, I can't say anything specific about that particular call, but we are aware of it. A spokesperson for the committee released a statement on Riggleman, which reads in part, quote, in his role on the select committee staff, Mr. Riggleman had limited knowledge of the committee's investigation. He departed from the staff in April prior to our hearings and much of our most important investigative work. He told the committee he was departing in order to help the people of Ukraine in their war against Russia. The Washington Post reports that when Riggleman left the committee, he had said that it, at the time that he was approached about writing a book related to the committee, but that it would not be published until next year. Let's bring in congressional investigations reporter for The Washington Post, Jackie Alemany. She's an MSNBC contributor also with us, the host of Way Too Early and White House Bureau Chief at Politico, Jonathan Lemire, and president of the National Action Network and host of Politics Nation, Reverend Al Sharpton. Good to have you all with us, Jackie. I'll start with you. Wow. With this book, it he decides to write it against the wishes of the committee. He claims he's going to help in Ukraine. His um, credibility is a little bit in question here. And yet the call came from inside the House. That's one revelation that seems to be corroborated by the committee. What have you heard? Yeah, Mika, that, that's exactly right. We reported over the weekend uh, that when there were rumors circulating that Riggleman was going to be writing a book about the committee's work, he was confronted by senior staff and denied such a project, saying that he was writing a book about a separate topic. Uh, subsequently, he was asked again about it, and he claimed that he was going to be writing a book about the committee's work, but that it wouldn't be published until the year's end. And now his book is coming out a day before their final blockbuster here which is certainly suspicious and uh, I think raised a lot of eyebrows and, and upset some of the members mm -hmm. on the committee who had previously been 
already infuriated with Riggleman's uh, press tour and media rounds he was making after his departure in April. He had only an eight-month stint on the committee, and members made it very clear that his work was important but limited. Uh, but yes, there are hundreds and thousands of tips, just like the one Denver Riggleman pointed out last night. But it's a matter matter of whether or not uh, investigators on the committee are able to vet those tips and confirm yeah. them. It's sort of like the work journalists do, and they don't put out that information uh, from the committee until they feel like they have that information uh, on a rock solid basis. I think there was some frustration that Rogelman was putting out sort of these tantali this tantalizing information without it being fully confirmed and vetted. Yeah. Uh,